Types gears are compact, positive engagement, power transmission elements that determine F speed, mm -hmm. torque, and direction of rotation of driven machine elements. Gear types may be grouped into five main categories, spur, helical, bevel, hippoid, and worm. Typically, shaft orientation, efficiency, and speed determine which of these types should be used for a particular application. Table 1 compares these factors and relates them to their specific gear selections. This section on gearing and gear drives describes best major gear types, evaluates how the various gear types are combined into gear drives, and considers the principal factors that affect gear drive selection spur gears spur gears have straight teeth cut parallel to the rotational axis. The tooth form is based on the involuta curve. Practice has shown that this design accommodates mostly rolling, rather than sliding. Contact of the tooth surfaces the involute curve is generated during gear machining processes as in gear cutters with straight sides near the root of the tooth. However, 99%, some sliding does not occur. However, and because second tact is simultaneous across the entire width of the meshing teeth, a continual series of shocks is produced by the gear. Thus rapid shocks result in some objectionable operating noise and vibration. Moreover, tooth wear results from shock loads at high speeds. Noise in wear can be minimized with proper lubrication, which reduces tooth surface contact and engagement shock loads. Spur gears are the least expensive to manufacture and the most commonly used, especially for drives with parallel shafts. The three main classes of spur gears are external tooth, internal tooth, and rack and pinion external tooth gears. The most common type of spur gear, figure 3, has teeth cut on the outside perimeter of mating cylindry cow wheels. With the larger wheel called the gear and the smaller wheel the pinion the simplest arrangement of spur gears is a single pair of gears called a single reduction stage, where output rotation is in a direct shine opposite that of the input. In other words, one is clockwise while the other is counterclockwise higher net reduction is produced with multiple stages in tool traces a trochoidal path. Figure 2, providing a heavier, and stringer, root section, because of this geometry. Contact between the teeth occurs mostly as rolling rather than sliding. Since less heat is produced by this rolling action, mechanical efficiency of spur gears is high. Often up to gears and gear drives 2001 MSD motion system design A145 figure I. Involute generated by unripping a cord from a circle figure 2. Root fill A trochoid generated B straight tooth cutting tool gear types. A145 gear basics. A153 speed reducers. A158 selecting gear, drives, A162 analyzing gear failures, A168, to which the driven gear is rigidly connected to a third gear. This third gear then drives a mating fourth gear that serves as output for the second stage in this manner. Several output speeds and different shafts can be produced from a single input rotation internal, ring, gears, ring gears produce an output rotation that is in the same direction as the input. Figure 4. As the name implies, teeth are cut on the inside surface of a cylindrical ring, inside of which are mounted a single external tooth spur gear or set of external tooth spur gears, typically consisting of three or four larger spur gears, planets, yusu, a lie surrounding a smaller central pinion, sun normally, the ring gear is stationary, causing the planets to orbit the sun in the same rotational direction as that of the sun, for this reason. This class of gear is often referred to as a planetary system. The orbiting motion of the planets is transmitted to the output shaft by a planet carrier in an alternative planetary or closure in these applications. But some type of cover may be provided to keep dirt and other contaminants from accumulating on the working surfaces. Helical gears Helical gearing differs from spur in that helical teeth are cut across the gear face at an angle rather than arrangement. The planets may be restrained from orbiting the sun and the ring left free to move. This causes the ring gear to rotate in a direction opposite of that of the sun, by allowing both the planet carrier and their ring gear to rotate. A differential gear drive is produced, the output speed of on a shaft being dependent on the other rack and pinion on gears. A straight bar with teeth cut straight across it, figure 5, is called a rack basically. This rack is considered to be as per gear on rollet and laid out fiat thus. The rack and pinion is a special case of spur gearing. The rack and pin ion is useful in converting rotary motion to linear and vice versa. Rotation of the pinion produces linear travel of the rack conversely. Movement of the rack causes the pinion toward at the rack and pinion is used extensively in machine tools, lift trucks, power shovels, and other heavy maw. Chinnery where rotary motion of the pinion drives the straight line action off a reciprocating part, generally. 
Therac is operated without a sealed NA146 motion system design MSD 2001 Figure 3. Spur gears have straight teeth cut parallel to the rotational axis Figure 4. Internal. Ring. Gears produce a complex form of output with a planetary configuration of Sun, planets, and ring Figure 5. Rack and pinion G-ring produces linear travel from rotational input. Shown here is spur gearing. Helical gearing is also available, but is not as common because the helical teeth create a thrust, which produces a force acting across the face of the rack. Worm rack ice also available. The axis of the worm, pinion, being parallel to, rather than perpendicular to, the rack circular thickness cordial thickness. Figure 6. Thus, the contact line of the meshing teeth progresses across the face from the tip of one end to the root of the other, reducing thanoes and vibration characteristic of spur gears. Also, several teeth are in contact at any one time, producing a more gradual loading of the teeth that reduces where substantially the increased amount of sliding AC Cheyenne between helical gear teeth, however, places greater demands on the lubricant to prevent metal to metal contact and resulting premature gear failure. Also, since the teeth mesh at an angle, a side thrust load is produced along each gear shaft. Thus, thrust bearings must be used to absorb this load so that the gears are held in proper alignment. The three other principal classes of helical gears are double helical, herringbone, and cross helical double. Helical gears, thrust loading is eliminated by using two uppers of gears with tooth angles opposed to each other. Figure 7. In this way, the side thrust from one gear cancels the thrust from the other gear. These opposed gears are usually manufactured with a space between the opposing sets of teeth herringbone gears. Teeth in these gears resemble the geometry of the herring spine, with ribs extending from opposite sides in rows of parallel, slanting lines. Figure 8. Herringbone gears have opposed teeth to eliminate side thrust loads the sammy's double helicals, but the opposite teeth are joined in the middle of the gear circumference. This arrangement makes herringbone gears more shafts. This overhung load, all, may deflect the shaft. Misalignant gears, which causes poor tooth contact and accelerates wear. Shaft deflection may be overcome with Stradiali mounting in which a bearing is placed on each side of the gear where space permits. There are two basic classes of bevels, straight tooth and spiral straight tooth bevels. Fessa gears, also known as plain bevels, have teeth cut straight across the fascia of the gear. Figure 9. They are subject to much of the same operating conditions as spur gears in that straight tooth bevels are efficient but somewhat noisy. They produce a thrust loads in a direction that tends to separate the gear's spiral bevels. Curved teeth provide an action somewhat like that of a helical gear. Figure 10. This produces smoother, quieter operation than straight tooth bevels. Thrust loading depends on the direction of rotation and whether the spiral angle at which the teeth are cut is positive or negative hypoid gears. Hypoid gears resemble spiral bevels, but the shaft axis of the pinion and driven gear do not intersect. Figure 11. This configuration allows both shafts to be supported at both ends. In hypoid gears, the meshing point of the pinion with the driven gear is about midway between the central position on butt and double helicals. However, the gear centers must be precise aligned to avoid interference between the meeting helixes cross helical gears. This type of gear is recom. Mended only for a narrow range of applications where loads are relatively light because contact between teeth is a point instead of a line. The resulting high sliding loads between the teeth requires extensive lubrication. Thus, very little power can be transmitted with cross helical gears bevel gears unlike spur and helical gears with teeth cut from a cylindrical blank. Bevel gears have teeth cute in an angular or conical surface bevel gears are used when input and output shaft center lines intersect teeth are usually cut at an angle soft at the shaft axes intersect at 90 degrees, but any other angle may be used. A special class of bevels called mitter gears have gears of the same size with their shafts at right angles often there is no room to support bevel gears at both ends because the shafts intersect. Thus. One or both gears overhang their supporting 2001 MSD motion system design A147 figure 6. Helical gears have teeth cut across the face at an angle for gradual loading figure 7. Double helical gearing uses two pairs of opposed gears to eliminate a thrust figure 8. Herring bonnet gears have opposed teeth joined in the middle figure 9. Straight tooth bevel gears are efficient but somewhat noisy. Page 4 of opinion in a spiral bevel and the extreme top or bottom position of a worm. 
This geometry allows the driving and driven shafts to continue past each other so that end support bearings can be mounted. These bearings provide greater rigidity than the support provided by the cantilever mounting used in some bevel gearing. Also adding to the high strength and rigidity of the hippoid gear is the fact that the hippoid pinion has a larger diameter and longer base than a bevel or spiral. Bevel gear pinion of equal ratio although hippoid gears are stronger and more rigid than most other types. They are one of the most difficult to lubricate because of high tooth contact pressures. Moreover, the high level soft sliding between tooth surfaces re-ends. This configuration allows the worm to engage more teeth on the wheel, thereby increasing load capacity in worm gear sets. The worm ice most often the driving member. However, a reversible worm gear has the worm and wheel pitches so proportionate that movement of the wheel rotates the worm in most worm gears. The wheel has teeth similar to those of a helical gear but the tops of the teeth curve inward to envelop the worm. As a result, the worm slides rather than rolls as it drives the wheel. Because of this high level of rubbing between the worm and wheel teeth, the efficiency of worm gearing is lower than other modular gear types. One major advantage of the worm gear is low wear, due mostly to their full fluid lubricant film that tends to form between tooth surfaces by the worm sliding action. A continuous film that separates the tooth surfaces and prevents direct metal to metal contact is typically provided by a relatively heavy oil, which is often compounded with fatty or fixed oils such as acidless tallow oil. This adds film strength to the lubricant and for reduces friction by increasing the oiliness of the fluid due to its efficiency. In fact, the hippoid combines the sliding AC shine of the worm gear with the rolling movement and high tooth pressure associated with the spiral bevel in addition. Both the driven and driven gears are made of steel, which for their increases the demands on the lubricant. As a result, special extreme pressure lubricants with both oiliness and anti-weld properties are required to withstand high contact pressures and rubbing speeds in hypoids despite these demands for special lubrication. Hippoid gears are used extensively in rear axles of automobiles with rudder wheel drives moreover. They are being used increasingly in industrial machinery worm gearing worm gear sets. Figure 12 consist of a screw-like worm, comparable to a pin iron, that meshes with the larger gear, usually called a wheel. The worm acts as a screw, several revolutions of which pull the wheel through a single revolution. In this way, a wide range of speed ratios up to 60. One and higher can be obtained from a single reduction. Most worms are cylindrical in shape with a uniform pitch diameter. However, a double enveloping worm has a variable pitch diameter that is narrowest in the middle and greatest at the 148 motion system design MSD 2001 figure 10. Spiral bevel. Gears have a curved teeth for smoother operation figure 11. Hippoid gears resemble spiral bevels, but the shaft axes do not intersect therefore. Both shafts can be supported at the fence figure 12. Worm gearing has perpendicular, non-intersecting shafts in which the worm acts as a screw. Several revolutions of the worm pull the wheel through one revolution. Page 5 Worm gear friction is further reduced through the use of metals with inherently low coefficients of friction. For example, the wheel is typically made of bronze and the worm of a highly finished, hardened steel. Thessalo friction materials can be used in worm gears because pressures are more uniformly distributed over the tooth surface than most other gear types. Worm gear shafts are perpendicular, non-intersecting, and may be pulled. Positioned in a variety of orientations non-circular gears though often overlooked, non-circular gears can provide several types of unusual motion or speed characteristics cams and linkages can provide these special motion requirements as well, but non-circular gears often represent a simpler, more compact, or more accurate solution. Servo-sized TEMs may also be able to do the job. But they are usually more expensive and require more expertise to solve the motion problems. Common requirements handled by non-circular gears include converting a constant input speed into a variably output speed, and providing several different constant speed segments during an operating cycle. Other applications require combined translation and rotation, or stop and well motion variable speed. Several types of non-circular gears, particularly elliptical gears, generate variable output speeds. Other Less commonly used types are triangular and square gears elliptical. A set of like elliptical gears can run at a constant center distance, but deliver an output speed that changes as they rotate. Elliptical gears come in two basic types, unilobe, figure 13, which rod it has about one of two fixed points on its long axis, and bilobe, figure 14, which rotates about its center. The speed reduction ratio of these gears than elliptical gears constant speed segments where an application requires several constant speed periods within a cycle. Multi-speed gears. 
Figure 15. May beta answer. These gears make the transition between speech by using special function segments on the gear perimeter between the constant speech sections translation and rotation. For applications requiring both translation